Hey guys, welcome back to our Elm Ross dual language API project. My name is Tensor. In today's tutorial, we're going to finish off our front end by adding in the Elm Bootstrap library so that we can make it look a little bit nicer. Now, I remember when I first did the original Elm SPA application, a bunch of people did ask me to showcase the Bootstrap library for Elm. Back then, the Bootstrap library was a bit immature, but nowadays it's quite a bit better. So I I felt that this would be a good time to showcase it. To get started, we want to install the Bootstrap package into our Elm environment. The package is called Rundus Elm Bootstrap, and so we use Elm package install. And you can put this dash dash yes flag if you don't want to hit yes every single time it asks you if it wants to make a change. And you can see here that our packages were successfully installed. For our imports, we're going to have a quite a few. We're going to have Bootstrap list group, and we're going to alias it as list group. We'll have Bootstrap form, which will alias as form. We'll have bootstrap form input, aliased as input, form checkbox, aliased as checkbox, bootstrap card, aliased as card, bootstrap button, aliased as button, and bootstrap.cdn, aliased as CDN. Most of the work that we're going to do is going to take place in the view part of our application. To bring in bootstrap and get it working, we call cdn.stylesheet. And what this will do is it will actually add a CDN link into our HTML. So unlike the Material Design Lite library, the Bootstrap library has this style sheet that gets embedded into the document. The big difference here, however, is that we have access to all the Bootstrap classes that may or may not have been coded into the library. So for instance, if I just wanted to make this div into a Jumbotron, I could just type in class Jumbotron. This will pull from our CDN style sheet and style this into to a bootstrap for Jumbotron. Now, probably the best place to start is our form. The, right now our form has div with an ID of form, and then we've got all of these labels and inputs and labels and inputs, and then we have this button. We have two text boxes and one checkbox. With our bootstrap library, we can lay this out quite a bit differently. Our bootstrap library allows us to lay things out in a bit more of an organized way. So you can see here we call form.form, and we have an empty list, and then we have our list, which will have all of our form elements inside of it and then each group will have its own group so we'll have form group which will have a form label and an input text box and then we'll have another form group with another form label and an input text box and then our final form group will have a form dot label and a check box dot check box the form label is very similar to the elm label so this just has the four element so this is for the title and then it has our text element which is just the title text our input element however is a little bit different so we call input.text and then we call input.value then we tie that to model.title rather than calling html attributes.value we call input.onInput rather than just calling the on input function that's inherent in elm and we point this towards our message we do the same for author and get author however our checkbox is quite a bit different as well you can see here that we're actually getting an error from calling the message alone so checkbox calls checkbox and then then you have checkbox checked and we set that to false so we want our checks box to start out not checked but because this property exists we need to create a function that will convert from a boolean to a message so let's go ahead and do that our function will be called is checked and this will convert a boolean to a message so it'll take in a boolean and output a message and we'll just say something like is checked we'll put in our boolean and then we can write something like if our boolean is true then we'll get our published now in elm you can't just write one if statement you need to have an else clause this is where we're going to have to add another message and our new message will be called no op this means no operation if our boolean is true then we'll call the get published message otherwise if it's false we'll call the no op message which will actually do nothing we need to go back up to our update function and our message type and add this no op type and then the functionality for it and here it is in our message and now we need to add a case in our update and because this literally does nothing, we just want to return a tuple of model and command.none. Now we can come all the way down to our form. So rather than referencing our message directly, we just put in our function. And we do not need to pass in a boolean because our check.onCheck will automatically pass in the boolean value of our checkbox, which by default is false as we've specified with this checkbox.check attribute. For our button element inside of our form, we call button.button and we want the button to be primary so bootstrap has a set of colors primary 
primary, success, danger, and info. Primary is green, so we want it to be green. And then we'll have our button on click event. This will point to our post book message. And then the text of this button will just be submit like before. So not much has changed here aside from the fact that we're using button on click rather than the normal elm on click function and we're also adding styling by calling button primary now let's look at our book view function and the way that this list is working so currently we have an unordered list with a bunch of list items and then we have a button at the end each of the list items turns our book.title our book.author and our book.published into text and then our button just has an on click of delete book with the book.id and then it has a text of an x on it and when we click it it deletes the uh, associated list that's connected to it and it removes the book from our database. With our bootstrap library, we want to start with a list group unordered list. Now, this is a little bit different than a lot of the other elements inside of Elm in the fact that it only has one list attached to it. And the reason for this is because it's actually usually used just to embed other elements inside of it. Typically, you don't add styling to the unordered list itself, though obviously there are times when you do that. And there are ways that we can can add styling to this entire list through the unordered list. This is a fairly succinct way of doing things rather than having two separate lists on an unordered list item like this. Inside of our unordered list, we want to have a new list item. This will have a span inside of it, and inside of that we'll have a B, which will have the text of title, so our title will be bold, and then underneath of it we'll have a P, which will have the text of book.title. We can repeat this format for our author, so this is a list item with a span inside of it and then bold and then a P with author and then book.author. And then for our last list item, we want to do something slightly more complicated. We put in list group.adders. This allows us to add a class to our list group. In this specific class, we're adding justify content between. And what this will do is it will actually push our button far to the right side of the screen and it will keep our span to the left side of the screen. So our span will will be like the other two spans. It will have a B and a P inside of it. This will have published and then book.published to string text. So it'll say our published and then true or false if the if the published is true or false. On the right side of the same box, we'll have our button.button, button.onclick, pointing at delete button with our book ID. And this will be button.danger, so it will be a red button. And we'll still have the X inside of it. And that's really all we need to do for our book view list. Now, if you wanted to, you could add a bunch of bootstrap classes to these spans, to these Bs or Ps, but I'm just going to leave them alone because honestly, I think that this should look fine as it is. Now, the other element that we really want to think about is our button that allows us to get the book. So obviously, we want this to be a bootstrap styled button rather than just a normal button. So to do that, we can change it from just a normal button to a button.button. .button. And then, of course, we have to add button.onclick with our message and then we can leave the text as get books but honestly this is going to still look a little sloppy we're going to create a new component called a card view and this will allow us to build a bootstrap card and then embed it inside of our original jumbotron div this has to take in the model and it will output HTML and message. And for our card view, the first thing we want to do is called card.config with a single list. This single list allows us to add styling that will apply to the entire card. In our case, we're just going to leave it vanilla. But if we wanted to say add padding or maybe add color to the entire card, we could do it here. And you'll notice that when we just had card.config in here, we were getting an error. When we add card.header and then card.block and then we pipe this into card.view, it it actually produces HTML and a message. If I remove card.view, we'll get our error again. And this is because the type that's being outputted is not HTML message, but rather card.config.message. To convert our card into an HTML element, we need to call this card.view function. Now we want to think about what our header is going to look like. Because this is going to appear at the top of our application, we kind of want it to be a title for our application. I'm just going to call it Elm Rust Book Database. Then inside of our card.block, we could add some styling to this as well in this list, but we just want to add some HTML elements into the second list. The first element that we want to add is our book form model. So this is our form function with the model being passed into it. And then we're piping it into card.custom because it's a 
quote-unquote custom HTML element that's not associated with the card type inside of the Bootstrap library. And you'll see here, if I hover over this, it says add a custom HTML element to be displayed inside of a card block. So that's what this card.custom function does for us. The next element that we want is a card.custom with button.button .button piped into it. And this is our button to get the book. So we'll have our form first, and then we'll have our get books button. And I quite literally just took the button from up here and copied and pasted it in here. Then we want to have a little paragraph break. So I'm just going to call BR with two empty lists and pipe it into card.custom so that we can have a little bit of space between our buttons and our card list. And our card list is just going to follow the same syntax that we have up here where we're just taking list.map and mapping our book view to a div and then piping it into card.custom. So let's remove it from here as well. And we'll remove our book form as well because we don't need that inside of our main div anymore. Underneath of our style sheet, we can just now call card view model. Now we can jump back into our command line and run yarn start to compile our Elm using brunch and then open up Rocket and serve the Elm to localhost 8000. All right, so here's our new application. You can see it looks quite a bit better. We have our title that says Elm Rust Book Database, and then we have a field for title and author. These look quite a bit better than before. And we have our checkbox for publish, which looks a bit more responsive. We can hit our get book button and this will bring out all of the books that are currently in our database. We've got uh, the title, the author, and the published and on the published we have our X button which we can click to delete a book. So for instance if I want to delete this book I can click it and it will delete it. And actually I meant to style this get books button but apparently I didn't. So let's do that real quick. And all we really need to style this is to call button.success. So I want to use the bootstrap success color on this button and that will turn it from gray to blue. And now if we reload this you can see we have this green button all right guys i know this was a fairly surface level tutorial but i hope you enjoyed it if you did feel free to like and subscribe if you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them in the box below and if you disliked it then by all means downvote it as much as you'd like have a good night